and our Wednesday. I'm not Kelly, and that's not <laughs> Dave. <laughs> were they the last ones to do this? They might have been. <laughs> As a duo, I believe they were. That's yeah. right. I'm actually, my name is Bruce Sundin. I work in electronic media video for A Communication. And I'm Scott Swanson, electronic media specialist, video guy as well. And as you can tell from the PowerPoint, um, we're going to talk a little bit about video and its impact, because there's things that maybe you don't know about video, what it can do. Besides that, we also have some fun little toys, new toys and stuff that we want to share. Um, um, think about when you want to get your message out, however you want to do that. We are your video life preserver. Make sure that you uh, you save, mm -hmm. know your life is saved, your money is saved, something saved. Either way, we are trying to preserve that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so we have a bunch of little tools and stuff, some new stuff we're going to show you. But uh, first, we want to kind of just kind of give you a... A few reminders of you know why video can help you and why video is important, and uh, some interesting stats that we found and um, about the power of video. Some some stats and some numbers that we were kind of looking up just to kind of help remind ourselves, but also then uh, remind um, everyone else. Um, video increases the chance of a front page Google result by 53 times. Pretty. Pretty big number there. I think that's impressive, but there's a stat that's more impressive than that that we should probably talk about first. What's that? I think um, video has the ability to give you job security, right? Well, when I say you, I do mean Scott and me, because job security for us <laughs> when we're doing video, I mean, it has to be, you know, you got to love this, because I love the crying baby. That's my favorite part. She didn't, didn't want to take a picture. But anyways, in all seriousness, uh, we'll go back to some stats and some numbers here. So, video search results, videos in universal search results have a 40% higher click-through rate than over their plain text counterparts. 52% of viewers take action after watching an online video. And visitors spend 10 times longer on a website with testimonial videos. So, get your message to where your customers are. Oh, this was not animated, but we'll keep going. Getting the message to where your customers are. Some stats we found about YouTube, um, most recent ones I could find was from 2014. 85% of online adults consider themselves regular YouTube visitors. Five billion videos are watched on YouTube every single day. And obviously from 2014, we know those numbers are probably going up. And then the number of hours people spend watching videos on YouTube has increased by 60%. And when I saw that, when I found that stat, it was saying from year to year, I believe from 2012 to 13, all the way to 14, it had gone up 6% each year. So, again, probably a number we're seeing going up and up. And you might think maybe that's because of all those cat videos out there. They, they do take a chunk of, of those views. But it, it's really, um, there's people that know and understand video and some of its strengths. So, um, one of the strengths that video has that you may or may not realize is one of evoking emotion among the viewer. So that's an important thing because a lot of times you're trying to get somebody excited or you want them to care, whichever that is. And and with the use of music and maybe the people are using some action, it really stirs up things in people. So um, for example, an awareness video, if you're trying to talk about um, Eastern Ash Borer, EAB, you really want that. Oh. Emerald, yes. Well, Sorry. I guess they're not the same emerald. <laughs> um, Eastern's a bad thing to have. We'll just stick with EAB, and then we know we're right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, if you want to, what's the big message you want you want with that? We we did a video with um, our forester Joe, and and the main message was, don't bring in outside firewood. But you can't just say that. There's lots of statistics to go with it. But we also used music and show devastated trees, and it really plucks the heartstrings, and that, that's a good thing, actually. And we've done a bunch of videos on floods, and that's important, too, because some people want to go and watch a video because they need it. I need to learn how to build a sandbag. That, I mean, that, that could be an important thing. But if you're really trying to make a point, if you, make, if you are, are able to tap into somebody's emotions, they're going to be drawn in in a different way and in, in a more deep way than just being entertained. So there's also a call to action. That's emotion can do that as well. And, um, and a good example of that is we did um, a couple of videos actually with Eat Smart, Play Hard. And you know your, your message is get out there, eat smart, and you can play hard. I mean, it's very simple. But we made it fun for the kids, and we used light music and a little comedy. And that, that's another kind of emotion that really plugs people in. 
And then, of course, there's fundraising. Really huge um, for nonprofits, for profits, for maybe just for you if you're trying to raise some funds um, for a project like 4-H Camp. Uh, another one, a lot of fun with that. And when you watch the video, you come away with it feeling like you've maybe learned something, but you're probably a little excited about, wow, those kids are really having a good time and learning something. I want to be a part of that. And that's that's kind of that emotional attachment. Some other uh, video strengths. Um, video, uh, uh, a way to kind of get some information out there. Um, as an educational video, you could do a video on a demonstration or like a how-to video, pretty popular ones we do, and then informational videos. We do a lot of videos in these three categories because sometimes you can't explain things very well uh, on maybe like how to do something or um, how something works with in you know on a, on a website with just text. So you need to kind of get that video out there to demonstrate it, to show um, maybe how something works or how to put something together um, or maybe how a program works. And so these videos uh, or videos work well for that. And some of the ones we've done uh, that are pretty popular, uh, Stump Pump Tips uh, has over a quarter of a million views on our YouTube page. Um, I'm currently editing a video on sump pump backup batteries or backup sump pump systems. Um, we, we had people request that, so we hope that, that will be pretty popular. Um, horticulture videos, we have a lot of good hits on horticulture videos. People love their gardening. Um, and then gearing up for kindergarten, that's a good informational one. We've done a few gearing up for kindergarten videos. Um, it allows uh, legislators, uh, parents, even some school administrators to see these videos done and learn a little, little bit more about it, and hopefully they'll have some buy-in at, at their school districts. But some other strengths for videos, uh, you know, it really helps to connect with the viewer. Video can connect with viewers. It can convey and convince better than any other type of content that we have available today. Um, and just as a company needs a website, more and more companies are adding videos to kind of help stand themselves out from the crowd. Video can give your message um, in a, an appealing way to the, to the viewers, and web videos have the ability to condense complicated information into digestible pieces, kind of like what I just talked about with having all that text on there and not being able to maybe get uh, being able to demonstrate maybe how something works, you can do it with with video. Um, you can show off your company's people and culture. It's a good way to help um, the viewer kind of uh, connect with you, connect with the people of your uh, of your uh, company, and it uh, helps add interactivity on your website. Instead of just having some boring website there, you might have a video off of the corner. Wow, well, wow! <laughs> if it's just like text and all that other stuff, you know. So, well. To go along with that, um, you've heard the term, um, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, there's 30 frames per second in one second of video. So imagine, you know, the kind of impact we're making just with that. But again, the, the demonstration video is a really good example of something that's very simple that you can show somebody almost better than any way of writing about it, um, um, just talking about it, but actually seeing it done. Those are really some benefits. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be a super long video either. It can just be something fairly quick you might record uh, while you're on the field or something that maybe you even have it on a tripod or um, even holding uh, a camcorder or a phone and you're doing something in, in front of it with your hands and, you know, a minute or two and you upload it and pop it out to your uh, constituents, clients, or whatever that need to see it very fast. And we've been involved at all levels of helping other people shoot it for them, them shooting it themselves. But either way, that, that kind of leads into where we're going to have show you some, some toys that will really help you um, with a camcorder or really your phone. And that's where I kind of want to head right now is just talk a little bit about that tool that's probably in your pocket. Um, these are do-it-yourself kind of tools. And one of them is, of course, your phone. Um, it depends on your phone because if you have a flip phone, eh, maybe not so much. But if you have a smartphone, you've got some pretty decent options. So let's just talk about resolution. Um, the phone resolution means how large that file, that picture will be. And it's like um, still photography in resolution. Really big is nice because you can always make it smaller and you don't lose any quality, but you can't really make it bigger. So the flip phone example is really no joke. If you shoot something with video off of a flip phone, it's reality, it's going to be a tiny little video. You bring it to your computer or someplace else, it's going to look really bad. So um, some phones, like example, this is the, well, it doesn't matter which one it is. This can shoot um, uh, 4K. Have you maybe heard that term? 4,000 
is really large. And um, I don't know if you have to shoot in that form, but if you do, you have lots of options because you could actually edit stuff in there um, and not just use the whole thing. It can be used on YouTube easily. You could send it to the news media. If, say you get a picture of a big tornado or something. Um, and you can see on the numbers on the screen, it just kind of describes what HD is. And a lot of these phones now have a higher resolution than your home camcorders. Wild. And the quality, you know, the biggest loss a lot of times is the lens, but there's not much of a lens on these things either. Anyway, so you have some pretty nice options with just a smartphone. And one thing that we're going to talk about is the, the front and back of a phone. Well, when we say back, we're referring to the back, you know, you're using the front of the phone. This camera is different than the one here. Now, not on every single phone, because I think some of the iPhones now may have changed that, but mostly this, the one in the back is the highest resolution. So you can take the biggest pictures, you can shoot the, the largest video, but when you flip it around and you're doing what we call the selfie, when you're doing a selfie, there's two major things that happen. One, they usually use a lower pixel camera and the video is usually a little smaller, but the lens, strangely enough, is wider. But that's because people like to do selfies. So, eh, so you, you know. need that wider angle lens because you're probably maybe a little closer than when you're shooting your kid out playing soccer, you know, this way, when you're doing your selfie from the front camera, you get a little wider angle all the time. Yeah, and so we're not going to go into all the details of all the settings and phones because they're all different, but they kind of all do the same sort of thing. Now, if you look at this graphic, you can see it says right there, DVD, that first portion is 720 by 480. That's just, uh, for one, it is kind of a wide screen, but not, it's more what we call 4 by 3, more square. But then you get to 720 and 1080, and those are the sizes we thought, wow, that's great, 1080p, that's about the best you can get. Well, now you hear them talking about this Ultra HD in 4K. That's how much bigger that 4K is. Um, so it just you, you sort of an idea of the your files are going to be larger too. Yeah, I guess that would be the. Best just going to say that too. If you're thinking you're going to go out and shoot a you know 15 minutes worth of video on your phone in that Ultra HD, uh, it's probably going to fill out your whole um, media storage on your phone because uh, the larger uh, settings that you're shooting, you're recording at, the larger that file is going to be, the more space it's going to eat up. Um, so you kind of need to be weary of that. Whereas like in a camcorder like this you have you know you pop in an SD card you can put like a 32 gigabyte SD card in there and shoot for at the highest quality probably for maybe an hour or two well I'll bring up the Agcom web page oh you missed one slide whoops VBS oh yeah <laughs> we can talk about it later yeah yeah um, well we're getting to this page because you can get to this page anytime you want just go to Agcom under services and you'll find the video services page. And this will list not just some tips and things off the side, I think Scott will talk about, but a little bit about our services because you can come in and use the very just a little bit of help or we can completely do it. And it really kind of depends on the kind of video because if you want a really um, focused, um, high quality uh, video that could be maybe even used on television if you got it to them, then you definitely need to involve us, but it doesn't have to go that level. We can help all the way down to the most basic level. Yeah. If you want to click on Even that. if you look on the lower left there, video project examples, uh, that's where we actually have uh, some examples of different uh, levels of service I guess we could help you with, starting out at the very basic where you would shoot it, just send us the video, we'd probably just uh, you know, maybe put on a title slide for you, maybe a little music if we have some time, if it's if there's not a lot of extra cleanup needed uh, with the video, and just throw it up on to, uh, throw it, maybe send it back to you through a shared drive or even upload it to YouTube. And it can, you know, like the range all the way down to some pretty extensive type editing and other services that we can do. And at the top, it says that we basically are $50 an hour. That's just a standard rate for everybody. And so it's all based on time, whatever time it takes to do something. But looking at those first two, the, the self-shot ones, that's kind of what we're talking about with our new tools. Um, uh, you know, showing you guys our phones and everything. Well, that's kind of what we tried to prioritize with getting some new equipment is equipment for what you guys are going to have out there, your phones, uh, maybe a small camcorder. And one of the coolest things that we got that we're pretty excited about. Can we bring up just video? Is that 
an option. Okay. I'm not really sure if they can. You stop sharing, I suppose. They escape. He always tells me what to do. There. <laughs> I don't know if it makes your video bigger, so because we're going to just demonstrate, show some videos now, or some show some stuff through the camera. Um, so with your phone, we have these new uh, lavalier microphones called Smart Lav. And see, it says right there on the top, Smart Lav Plus. And so it's a smartphone microphone. Even on the back, it kind of just shows you a little bit of you know how it goes in. And, and so you might grab your phone and kind of look and wonder, well, where would I plug that into? Well, your phone, where you have your, maybe you plug in your headphones to listen to music or something, it has that little headphone icon. Well, that actually can be for your for a microphone as well. So I'm going to plug this microphone into my headphone jack, and then when I'm on, when I'm ready to take some video, so now I'm on my video, I got my video up, my camera up, and I press record with my video, it even tells me recording with earphone mic, that little thing, I'm going to try to see if I can show you that real quick here. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's Oh, I think it'll work. Yeah. Oh. One of the things that's interesting about it is See, right there on the bottom there, okay. in the bottom, that little thing that showed up on the bottom which says recording with earphone mic. So it shows me then that this my phone is reading my earphone, but now it's a mic, earphone mic. So I'm recording with my little lavalier microphone I have here. It's a simple concept, but it's also a complicated one because us, we're used to, you know, an audio input. And you get a phone, and there's no place in here to input audio other than a microphone that you can't tap into. But what's interesting is the way they made the, the plug that goes in here, it, it automatically turns that into an input, which is, like you, like Scott said, it shows you right on the screen. Yeah. And so, you know, you could have this plugged in, and you could uh, be recording something just right in front of you and talking about it. And it could be a you know, maybe a little bit of a windy day, or even you have the camera away from you a little bit. I got to unplug it there because I don't know if it unraveled. But you're going to get really good audio, even though, it might be a little bit uh, further distance away from your hands. You're getting it right from this microphone. Um, and that's kind of the point of having the microphone, is that you get that microphone closer to your mouth. If you put it here versus wherever the phone is, you don't get as much ambient sound. It's mostly right here. Right here. And uh, we have a video, um, how to shoot quality video, that talks about how you can tuck that microphone in your shirt and that works as a windscreen, so you won't get much sound, wind sound. Mm -hmm. And if you maybe wanted to interview somebody or you needed a, a little extra, this is only about a six-foot cable, so if you need maybe a little more room to, to have it stretched out for somebody else, we also, with, I, I don't know if I mentioned, but we have four of these for checkout in ag communication. We have four of these cable extenders as well. So you'd put it the, 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 this end into the extension cable, and then this, then this would go back in the phone, and then you'd have, and these are 20 feet. So now you got 26 feet of cable from this microphone, and you could then, you could have somebody walk out a little bit further if you wanted to interview them. They could, you know, go out as far as you want, or you could even put it on a tripod maybe and spin it around and be talking yourself on camera, but you'd be able to walk away from the camera or the phone, however you want to call it, <laughs> a, a little, a, a good ways, 20 some feet and be in an almost an entirely different environment than if you're trying to do it like this. Now, what's interesting about this is we're, these are available for checkout, of course, but we might be tempted to use them as well. In fact, I'm currently working on a video that's trying to um, uh, attract grad students. And we're thinking about, maybe not the whole video, but a portion of it, we're actually going to shoot with a phone as a selfie and have the students do it. We'll use these kind of tools for that. Um, well, this goes with camcorders. You still can use these puppies, and this is available for checkout. But you also need a microphone for this, and we have some different ones available. A standard, what Scott was talking about, it's known as a lapel or a lavalier microphone that clips here and just plugs directly in the camera where it says mic input. It does not say headphone. <laughs> it won't work that way. So. These things are designed for smartphones. They will not work with this. And this will not work with that. But in either case, sometimes we want to be a distance away. So we have wireless microphones. And what you do is you take this microphone and you plug it into what would be called a transmitter, turn it on, 
clip it to yourself, you put the mic here, and then at the other end, you simply take the receiver and plug it into the camcorder. It's and it's really, it's that simple. Um, the downside is you have to make sure everything works first. So we always recommend that when you do any kind of audio, irregardless, that you bring, uh, minimum bring earbuds. But if you have headphones, those are better at picking up uh, wind sound and stuff like that because you won't probably even hear the wind when you use earbuds. You need a higher quality headset in order to hear that, that you know that sound that <laughs> kind of sounds like an earthquake. Well, that that works with this. We also have an option for the cell phones for, for wireless. You can get, uh, like Bruce had mentioned, that you, these, the, the one for the smartphone does not work into the camcorder and the vice versa, the camcorder not, but you can actually get adapters that do work into your phone that would work with these wireless options. I was going to show that we have a second. So we have two wireless ones you can check out through AdCom um, that would work well with your camcorders or really any other camcorder or really any camera other than a smartphone because these are some pretty high quality ones here that we that we have available for checkout. Um, I, I don't know if you caught it, but before I mentioned maybe getting somebody on camera or yourself doing like a stand up is what we call it in the news days. Um, if you uh, put your phone onto a tripod, you know, you could be able to really walk away from, get a good distance like out in the field or at a you know location you're at. Well, you might, well, sit on a tripod. How do you put your phone on a tripod? Well, we also have four tripod adapters for your smartphone. So we got, um, I guess this is, doesn't really show it much here on the case, but we do have four of these called Archon smartphone holders. And so basically all you have to do is you stretch that out right there. And now you have this little adapter that goes onto your smartphone, and then on the bottom it just has the little screw in, and then you just screw that onto your little top of your tripod, and then you pop that back on your tripod, and you, I'll show it here in a second once I can. Yeah, there's, <laughs> and while he's doing that, there's other versions of it, like this one, same kind of adapter, but it's on a clamp. So we could clamp this to just about anything, this monitor, um, Probably his ear might hurt a little bit, but <laughs> um, but that's handy too. Uh, if you need just to mount the the phone somewhere for video, or maybe you just want to use it to see something while you're demonstrating, which is very handy. There we go. I got the uh, now I got the tripod adapter. Phone is on it. I twisted it back onto the uh, top of the tripod and clipped it back in. Now I have my phone on the tripod. You could be interviewing somebody, have a nice steady shot, or you could even be uh, selfies are really nice. Oh, yeah. You can do a big selfie that way. Or you could have it set up and maybe, like I said, walk uh, a little bit away from the, the phone slash camera and do a little intro yourself on camera. Stand up. Yeah, and another handy thing is say you're doing something, for example, imagine us being in the field somewhere. You can have your camera all, or I'm excuse me, your phone all set up on a shot, and it can be held there, and you can be using two hands to demonstrate something while you're actually somebody else. You don't need a third, second or third person to hold the other equipment. Now, keep in mind, this is just stuff that might be handy, and we can help you with it at any level. I mean, it, from just doing it yourself to us being plugged in, because we will use this stuff as well. You know, it sounds like, well, you guys don't want to use a phone. Well, we use whatever tool is necessary to, to get the job done and, you know, make the best possible video. I was actually going to bring the, the page back up. <laughs> Because sure. uh, also from this page, uh, we wanted to let everybody know also about uh, kind of some important training tools you can get on the side. I think it's still loading. Still loading. There, okay. we go. there we go. So back to our, if, even, if you're on either our main video services page or as you see when you advance the project examples, the trainings there on the right side stay the same. Um, you can how, how to upload a video to YouTube. Some tips for interviewing, script writing, PowerPoint, and then how to capture quality video. It's a video that Bruce and I put together mm, five years or so ago, and just something we kind of threw together for a, a meeting that we wanted to uh, show um, for some of our staff. And it's gotten a lot of play, I guess you could say, because we've had colleagues from other states when we go to some of our conferences who say that they use it and they send it out to their staff members who might be out you know, doing video on their own. Kind of a, a, 
I, I'd say quick because it's a 10-minute tutorial of, of uh, lots of different tips and tricks, th things to think about while you're out shooting. It's a solid entry-level video. If you don't know a lot about video, will you watch that? And that'll help you prepare. Um, it'll help you before you go on a shoot. It can help you to know what to get before you plan your shoot. These are all helpful things, and it's a quick video. goes pretty fast, and we're going to be doing a HD version of it. Well, when the weather's, the weather's getting pretty good, so we might do it. We got a grant from ACE, Association for Communication Excellence, in order for us to upgrade that video. And, and again, when we do it, we shot it with this, one like this. But we'll use an, a, a small HD camera, maybe even a phone, um, to, to demonstrate so it, you know what you're up against when you're on the field. And we're going to hopefully uh, throw some tips in there for your phones, um, some some quick ones that kind of can fit in with what we had um, similar to the video or, you know, the tips that we kind of had similar to that in the video before. But we might even, if we have time, maybe make a real shortened version uh, for just phones that kind of can break off from this. But something we try to remind people is you, you might watch it today, but maybe you're going to go out and shoot or you got to go out and get your video in a month. Try to s save a few minutes to, to watch it real quick before you go out because it'll just give you a few more reminders. Uh, something might trigger that to remind you once you're out there, oh, yeah, I should try this, or I need to be weary of the uh, the train that just went by, even though I'm trying to get some good sound. And if you haven't done it before, it really should be watched twice. Once, the first time, just to watch it, take it in, and maybe think about planning your shoot, where you're going to be, if any of that stuff you can control. And like Scott said, then just before you go out, just as a reminder of some of these things that really will help just improve the quality of your video. But of course, if you want the highest possible quality, you got to have us do it. <laughs> hey, Bruce and Scott, this is Kelly. Yeah. You've got a question over in yep. the uh, chat pod from Christina. Yep. I saw that. Yep, Christina, thanks for the question. Please, anybody else, throw some questions down in the chat for us. And yes, the microphone, even though it says smart love, which would make you think smartphone, it is uh, for tablets as well. It even says broadcast quality audio direct to your smartphone or tablet. Um, I'm just kind of assuming and throwing out a guess here, but most of most types of tablets would have the same microphone input it's, as it's your an phone. earphone jack, yeah. It's it's not gonna have the mic input like you do for a camcorder or another kind of um, other types of larger cameras, I guess you could say. Hey thanks for that question it was a good one. Yeah. Anybody we we're also always open for questions. Um, anyone have any more questions? I had a thought. Well, yeah, because a lot of people do still do still use. Let's say, say still, but I, I know tablet video was very popular yeah. for a few years before the phones started having uh, you know better cameras in them. Yeah. But I still see people who take video with their tablets a lot while they're on the boat. I mean, it's got that nice big screen when you're when you're looking at it. So, um, yeah, check out these phones or use that for either phones or tablets. Lots of good stuff. And I can't say for sure, but it should work on most tablets. Yeah, something but, you have to check. Just like we were talking about, uh, we didn't want to get too far into numbers and, and certain specifications with phones because obviously they're all different. You just kind of need to do some research on your phone your, or your tablet yourself. Because, um, uh, you know, talking about the front and back cameras, we know some phones are getting better where they're actually they're going to be exactly the same megapixels for both the front and um, the back lens, I guess, and and. Everyone's going to have different storage inside, for so how much video you're actually going to be able to record mm -hmm. is going to be different with each phone. Some phones allow you to add little mini uh, micro SD cards, which would obviously give you more storage space for videos or photos that you take. And a video, whatever video you want to do, we do recommend that you talk to us, even if you're going to do it yourself, because we can help you talk you through some of the important points that you need to do for planning and w whatever else for your video. But um, there's reasons you do it yourself. One, maybe you don't have any money. Two, you're someplace where we can't get to. Um, but if at all you need high quality, you really want um, us to help you with it and, and get the most bang for that type of activity, then please contact us because we go the whole, every level, um, starting with just talking about your, we've had people come in and want to do a video, and they ended up not doing a video. It's weird because there's other things that are more effective. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it could be. But 
usually we help you um, hone that video um, so you get to get it to the audience that's most important and give them the message that, that we think they'll listen to. And that's a really a team effort. It's really fun working with people and, 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 and that whole process of pumping out something that uh, is really effective. I guess I could bring up real quick, um, if you're curious on how to, if you want to check out this equipment, right here on the left-hand side, equipment checkout. And there, Elizabeth's email is there at the top and her phone number. And obviously there's many stuff in here because you got the banners and whatnot, but there's cameras right here. Um, this one right here, the, can, uh, the 104 is the one we were kind of showcasing here. It's our newest camcorder. This would be the Canon uh, 8 gigabyte one. She's got listed at 104. But you can also check out still cameras as you see here, but we, I don't know if she's gotten to add the new, yep, here we go. Down here then we have the smartphone recording accessories. So we have the lavalier mics. You can, I said four because I have one that I keep in my office um, so we can use it. But You didn't let me use that one. <laughs> but um, So if these three were checked out at the same time, uh, you can always contact me and I can let you borrow ours. So we have the, it's all listed there on the website there at the equipment checkout. Well, that's about it. Unless we have some questions, I don't see any more in the chat. And our, on the video services page is our contact info. If yep. you do have any other questions, go ahead and give us a call. Shoot us an email. Text us. That way. <laughs> <laughs> don't text to that number. Though. Yeah, exactly. So thanks for joining us, everybody. Appreciate it, and uh, happy shooting if you do it yourself, but remember, we can do it. And then...